Hello everyone, and welcome to this year's Fasting Devotional. My name is Robert Vega, I'm one of the pastors here at the Way Road Outreach. And every year now for the past 17 to 18 years, me and my wife have been fasting at the beginning of every year for 21 days with our, our family here at the Way Road Outreach. We fasted for wisdom, we fasted for strength, we fasted for insight, we fasted for breakthrough, we fasted for help in our families, we fasted for uh, our prosperity in our ministry, we fasted for our finances, and we even fasted for the home that we moved into three years ago. God even answered that prayer. So God has just been so amazing in uh, every year just being committed to this fast. And uh, we've seen God do some amazing things and answer some amazing prayers. You know, fasting is a spiritual practice that enables us to grow in our relationship with God. And the purpose of a fast is to set aside a specific length of time for sacrificing certain desires like not eating certain foods or doing certain things as a physical commitment to seek God's wisdom and help or direction through prayer. I remember when my wife got sick, I was fasting for her healing and the doctors came and they told us that they found some cancer inside of her. And I began fasting and, and for an answer. Lord, help us find an answer. What's going on? Well, of course, this impacted us like it would anybody else. We pressed in, got into prayer, and began fasting even more. And the doctors were able to go in there, find the cancer, remove it, and today she is cancer-free. And, and uh, she does not have no more cancer in her life. Now, this took our faith to another level of trusting God for healing and to answer our prayers. Remember, God is not the one who brings uh, sickness and disease, but he is the one that can provide the strength we need to get through every circumstance and every situation that we may find ourselves in. Now, Jesus promises that there's great rewards that we can experience here on earth, as well as in eternity for choosing to live this way. So in Matthew 5, 11 through 16, he, tell, he says this, he says, God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. See, if people are talking about us and putting us down and coming against us because we are his followers, because we are faithful, loyal uh, 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 believers in Christ, we know that we're doing something right. We know that our faith is strong because we are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Look what he says in verse 12. He says, be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. So people have been, all, all the prophets of God and, and all throughout history have all been persecuted for their faith in God. It's a spiritual war, but, but here he reminds us to be glad about it. And, and then in verse 13, he tells us something that's very unique in 13 and 14. He says this, he says, you are the salt of the earth. Now as salt affects food for flavor, us believers in Christ should make an impact in the world by the way we live and, and act towards one another, right? I, I know that, that when I'm eating and I pour a little salt on it, it just adds flavor that makes the, the, the food more delicious. And that's what we Christians do. We bring Christ to a bland world that's in need of answers, that's in need of, of, a, of a, a spiritual awakening of Jesus Christ. And because of who we are and the life that we live, we're able to give them Jesus. Remember, we need to stay salty. We need to stay on fire for God. We need to stay, uh, we need to stay spreading the word and sharing the word with all those that are out there that are lost. Remember, souls are what matter the most, right? And, and in verse 14, Jesus goes on to say that you are the light of the world, like a, a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. We are children of the light. We're children of the day, and we are unable to be hidden. Too many people are looking at us because they want to see Christ. They're looking for Jesus. They're looking for a real one. And we have the light of Christ inside of us, and we shine. We are children, and we shine, and we magnify Christ uh, because of, of uh, the way we live and because we are followers of Jesus Christ. So we need to share the gospel wherever we go and with how many people we can. No, and in verse 15, he says, no one lights a lamp, then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. So in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see. Remember, people are watching us and you can be, you can influence them by the great life that you're living, the amazing life that you're living, and by being able to persevere through circumstances and situations where the rest of the world would be in despair. 
He says, he says, let your light shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. You know, Jesus doesn't command us to be salt and light. He says that we already are the salt and light of the world because of our relationship with him. He has changed us by his love and his sacrifice for us. And we need to stop trying to be somebody that we already are and just know that he gives us the power and the desire to do what pleases him. Submit to God, resist the devil, and don't copy the, the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you by changing the way you think. Humble yourself in obedience to God and he will lift you up and shine brightly for God in this dark, crooked, perverse world. God has blessed you to be a world changer. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this portion of scripture. We'll see you soon.